So ladies and gentlemen, if you missed the first show, we shared some incredible information about why it is that people upgrade their garages because there's so much value it adds. It just makes it all usable. I mean, how many people just like, they don't even want to spend time in their garage because it's no fun. It's a dirty, dingy place. But the garages we've got here that uh, my buddy Brandon has put together, take note. I got my big pencil out here. Remember to take note when I break this thing out. Start taking notes right now because Brandon is going to share with us some of the more insider secrets about how this works and why he does it and how you can make sure you have the best value for your garage. Really, uh, for somebody who's looking to buy or sell a house or just has been there for a long time, wants to make an upgrade, to turn it into that man cave where he can watch. He's got, he's got guys going to watch the Super Bowl in the garage now, right? <laughs> where are you going to watch Super Bowl in the garage? Well, let me show you my garage, everybody. Now you can see why we do this. So with that, we're back here for show number two. If you missed show number one, check it out. It's going to be on my Facebook my Instagram uh, for the Your Little Castle Show. Brandon will have it out there on his website or his social media as well because we want you to see all that information because Brandon really shared some secrets of the, of the uh, industry and garage designs, and uh, it's garagedesigns.com, garage-designs.com. So tell me, how, though, has technology changed the way things are done, and how does that impact what you guys are doing now? Is it one of those things where they've got new lasers and beams? How do you, how do yeah. you get the, these floors that look so cool? Yeah, so, you know, there's so many different epoxies now, you know, versus in the when we started, you know, a lot of these other companies, they have these specific epoxies, and they just stick in their ways, and, you know, we really try to versatile and try to use all the new technology that's coming out to really, you know, help prep the concrete, put down, you know, the best epoxy for the scenario. And it really, there's just so much that technology has done to really change the industry. And it's pretty cool. Yeah, I say there's, it seems like technology kind of affects just about everybody in some way oh, that yeah. they found a new way to, with lasers. And I like I said, I don't get to it, but just to make a floor that looks so awesome like that. While you were talking, I put up on the wall some of the work that you've done here. I mean, literally, like, I feel like I'm in the Grand Taj Mahal or something. <laughs> These places look so beautiful. This is not just, a, this is where you keep your Ferrari, right? If you, But I mean, this is, but it just looks beautiful and, and this yeah. upgrades the whole, I just, you talked about it when people in the first show, go watch that first show, everybody. And it was a matter of like, you really get that first impression. If you're selling a house and you've got one of these garages set up, boy, you really stand apart right there too. Oh, and these yeah. aren't like 50, $60,000 upgrades. Oh, people no, are no, doing no. these for what's the, the minimum it takes to get a floor put in? Uh, 2,500 bucks. Can't. Two? Yeah. <laughs> I almost can't get my own carpet or wood laid down mm -hmm. for that, you know, oh, anywhere no. in my house. And this lasts forever, I guess, right? This isn't like... Carpet. Yeah, yeah. So we really don't have much problems with it. So, you know, you usually get at least 15 years before something starts really going wrong. Yeah. You know, proper prep, that's everything, you know. Okay. So... Well, that's key to what we're talking about here because uh, when you get into these things, this just is, again, this is one of these things that kind of allows you to separate yourself from the, uh, from the crowd. Well, tell me a time when you really felt like you helped a client. There's got to be um, somebody's been in business as long as you have, mm -hmm. uh, and you've had a few times where there was somebody who goes, "Oh, I don't know what happened," and, and you had to come to the rescue. How did you help? Uh, so that kind of comes across pretty often. So we actually had a guy about a month ago was supposed to get his epoxy floor done that week, and the contractor just went MIA. So we're mm -hmm. like, you know, we're swamped, but we'll, we'll squeeze you in, get it done because he had like a bunch of construction equipment and workout gear coming in the garage. And so he was trying to get everything ready. I was like, oh man, so we really had to pounce on it. But, you know, just people really want to utilize the space, you know, they just really want an ease of mind in the garage. And so it feels like every job people are just like, oh, wow, this really, you know, did it up, you know, whether it's a not only a garage, you know, we'll do a basement, commercial area, whatever. Yeah, it does seem nice you mentioned that. Th this, there's a lot more that goes to this because it makes it more of a universally usable. Mm -hmm. You can live out there. You can watch. You can throw a couch out there and sit oh, on yeah. it. Your tile floor of almost kind of what it's like. Mm -hmm. And then uh, at the same time, you can park a car there. Yeah. It's a nice place to keep your car. Don't want that car to leak any kind of uh, oil on the on the, on the the cement, but on the finish here, I guess, the, mm -hmm. the epoxy. On the epoxy. But it's easy to clean up, I guess, too, right? Oh, yeah. Just take a wet rag, and it usually just wipes right up. You know, don't get too crazy with it. <laughs> <laughs> don't start breaking out the liquids and chemicals. Right, right. Cause but, some problems. But, yeah, no, it's power wash. You can use simple green whatever so it all works <laughs> now you're reminding me of uh my dad made a joke many years ago i always talked to him 
He's up in the big baseball stadium in the, in the sky now. But he bought me this marble finished table. Mm -hmm. And he said, Carter, we bought that so that when you're done with your, the parties you have, you can just hose it off. <laughs> and, it's, and, it's, and you're ready to go. But it's, you see my joke I'm making there. Essentially, there's similar that you got when whatever you've got going on, there's mm -hmm. nothing in here that you can't just, you can literally take a hose oh, yeah. and spray it off and use yeah. a power washer or whatever. Is that easy maintenance? Is that why these things are so Oh, no yeah. To... So they're easy maintenance. You know, they're not, you know, you have like the super slick concrete, but even with the epoxy, you know, the flakes give it some grip, you know, and it's just super nice to, Makes it easy for people. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. It, I mean, it's super easy to clean. You know, it gets wet. It's not the end of the world. You know, with bare concrete, it's usually like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. So, I imagine it's not too slick, but it's slick enough to where it's not something you have to worry about scraping stuff off. Mm -hmm. You can wipe it off. Like you said, you, you get yeah. something that's a little dirty, even up to oil. Mm -hmm. Just wipe it with a rag, and it's clean. Right. Easy to maintain. Can't even. You can do that with some of your floors. You can't do that with carpet, right? Um, oh, no. but not at all, obviously. <laughs> but I mean, by now you've you've learned. This is something and something you offer to make this very easy maintenance for people, right? So that they can uh, make this kind of an upgrade for to their house and really make mm -hmm. the, make their house look dynamite too. That's what I got to keep coming back to because that's really what you're doing here. We'll show you some more of the work we got here. But I'm, I'm already impressed. Let's say somebody says, "I'm ready to sign up. I want you to." design my garage for me what's mm -hmm. the process for somebody to get started with you so really you know you can call us you can do an online form message us on any of our social medias i'll talk to you and then we come out check out everything you need give you a quote and go from there and you can see everything you need right there on the website there's the phone number that's you're located in fenton where the, that's where the cardinal cowboy grew up we talked a little bit about that and uh, all the information you need to get started right there including a location for where you guys are at and uh but it seems like the process is pretty easy. So somebody just gives you that phone call, then you go, you pay them a visit. Then you go to their house. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And, and so we make it pretty painless. Survey it. Tell me the process after that, then. So after that, you know, we collect the deposit and put you on the schedule, and that's that. You'll come back with a, a design for them too, and you say, Oh hey, yeah, yeah. Here's so, what, here's what we think based on what you told me. Like I said, I think in the first show we talked about this a little bit, but we didn't get as much depth as I'm going right now. And that is the people to come to you with the designs. Not very often, but more of they kind of have some ideas. You listen to them. Yeah, and usually then you say, they come back to you and you say, Oh yeah, let, let's design something, show you what it looks like. Right. Yeah. So usually they'll go on like Instagram or something. They'll have a little idea. You know, they'll show me their phone, what they're looking for, and you know that gives us a pretty good idea where to navigate it and really take that picture but give them something completely that's their own not some kind of cookie cutter hate to redo the same job it's just boring after that yeah well i guess the internet allows you to there's a lot of resources out there for people that are saying give me the ideas mm -hmm. and you can kind of listen do they get kind of a pre-drawn sketch before that you could show yeah. them yeah yeah so we'll send out a sketch you know for cabinets slat wall that fun stuff and you know there's even apps that we have for you could see what the floor would look like in a garage or a basement a porch whatever but uh yeah so it, we really give you basically what you want on a piece of paper before we even put anything in okay so you know what you're getting we're all on the same page right. and nothing's lost in translation there you go again you want to make it easy for people to kind of preview this and, and they're going to spend some money oh. and give them a little bit idea of what they're doing and then they say that's what i want go get it right and of course i would imagine along the way there's very often something they go well can you change this can you modify that is something is that something that's easy for them to, to make adaptation oh yeah yeah way? so i mean we get every dimension of the garage you know you want to make a cabinet a little bigger we know how much room you have on the whole wall to if it works then we'll adjust it if it doesn't then we'll just go from there yeah so it's one of those similar situation you say the show must go on we will figure out a way to right. get this done nobody says oh no take it all out i don't want to do. that's i mean nobody does that because they're so excited about what they've got and you can fix whatever hurdle they might have run into oh yeah yeah it's whether nothing plumbing nothing that popped impossible. up they didn't realize is there right rebar that got left somewhere or, or how's <laughs> that what are the things you have to deal with so you know usually you know bust up concrete if you know it, there's really no obstacle that we can't really overcome bust it up concrete that doesn't sound well you know some people they have like massive chunks missing in their concrete so oh, okay. but we have epoxy patches that you know are built to like withstand the flex and everything of concrete so okay. there's so many things that we can do we've never had a job that we had to completely walk away from because it was just oh a nightmare you know <laughs> right but no it was i don't think we've had anything too bad well as a matter of when you're really dealing with something like this if you can lay cement cement and concrete mm -hmm. you can do just about anything right there's not much more to the fundamental 
heavy lifting side of the world <laughs> than there is concrete and you right. can make that happen anywhere right. commercial or residential mm-hmm. and porches and you say also do people do their outside patios like this sometimes yeah too? yeah so the epoxy like i said there's so many different types of epoxy there's ones that are specifically made for the outside and there's ones that are meant to you know if you do a basement you have an old city home or something it has a moisture barrier in it so nothing's going to push up your floor so there's just so many different things that you can do for any space, really. Wow. Okay. So yeah, I didn't know there was uh, what'd you call it, a moisture barrier. Yeah. And that's what yeah. Happened. And it's because there's they're not they're dug into where the, the foundation has got their air, or moisture does come through the ground. right. Right. So you know you have hydrostatic pressure. You know when water's pushing up through the concrete. So we put down a moisture barrier and then the epoxy itself, and then you have thirty pounds of resistance to uh, hydrostatic pressure. So. There, ladies and gentlemen, he said hydrostatic barrier. Big words for, for these guys. They know what they're talking about. You can tell uh, they're, they're bringing out some of those for us. But, but that's that's where you've got to get into. Because you don't want somebody to have one of these built and in place and all of a sudden it starts to crumble because oh, yeah. it's cement. And if there's too high a level of water mixture or mm-hmm. uh, condensation or whatever, I guess, you right. tell me that can really disrupt it and cause it to crack and, and you, you seal it off and make sure that doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you'd hate to be so excited for the space and then six months later it's just going to crap you know you really got to get everything together keep it nice you really got to know your stuff you know make sure you're talking to a reliable person and then just go from there you know there's so many epoxies for every space so we can make anything work really and is it an epoxy from the sense that it is a, a mixture of two chemicals that come together and then yes. make a hardened yes. surface? Yes. Explain to me the, the epoxy process and how that gets that cool finish that you've got there. So there's a bunch of different ones. So with the flakes, really what it is, you know, we grind the floor to the crack apparel, all that fun stuff. And then we'll paint the uh, floor with the base coat, which is usually the gray or tan. And then we'll throw the flakes into it. The flakes take, and then we'll put a coat of clear on top. But with the marble epoxy, where it looks like, you know, stone and all that fun stuff, we really just mix whatever pigments you like or whatever you're trying to mimic. And it just makes it, you know, we blend it all together and you dump it out and just put your little designs in with brushes, whatever, even a leaf blower. There's so many different right. applications. Yeah. So, you, ladies and gentlemen, he breaks out the leaf blower to spread this out to make, make the pattern and get the design that they want. Yeah, yeah. It's trade secret to everybody. Yeah, there That's you go. That's pretty cool. Now we're talking about, all right, now you're doing some stuff. <laughs> Breaking out the cowboy hat again. Hold on. Because I'm a cowboy <laughs> on the steel. Well, so you're making it happen. There's, you got to be resourceful. I didn't realize it's a matter of developing that pattern and getting the, the look that you want. you got to be on your toes. you gotta be, You got to have something that can blow the air to, to finish it the way you want. And yeah. It, and it actually moves the, yeah, the flakes. Yeah. You keep calling them flakes, the pieces, the particles. That are so there. that's with... Uh, the flakes with the metallic floor that's when you well you use the leaf blower on both but to get a design in it with the metallics yeah you can use a leaf blower and just like blowing a puddle you know you see the water move you can see all the ripples and all the different colors move and blend together and it's it's really neat so there's where you get to do some more of your artistic side of the oh yeah too because brandon here is also a heck of a musician we talked about that a little bit in the first show piano guitar and drums you've yes, played sir. all of them about the flute, saxophone? No, the saxophone's next. I love a saxophone. Okay. Something about it. <laughs> all right. So very artistic, very creative, and gets to put all this stuff together for everybody because this is how you make stuff happen. If you're going to have a business that is that allows for such creativity, you need to have that kind of a mind. If you're just, just systematic, mechanical, a bunch of bars, a bunch of mm-hmm. um, posts, and, and then ele- that doesn't look so pretty, right? You've got to make these things look fantabulous and again i'm going to put up i'm going to click on some of the examples you've got here on your uh on your website if i go i'm sorry i go back over here to the gallery but i mean wow these epoxy floors yeah take a look here on the wall we've got some of these secret pictures that we're going to put up for everybody um there we go sorry everybody take a look there and this is some of the work you can get that looks dynamite we've got a higher res one over here that you brought with us and uh well you've got just about everything and it makes us look awesome and uh, allows for some of the creative design to make these things look just showroom quality and uh, that's what you bring to the table here for everybody yeah we try to make everyone you know as happy as possible everyone's got different needs different wants different color schemes they have in their head and we just roll with it well very cool i'm going to jump back over i do want to show some more of the pictures that we've got i'm gonna put these back up on they're on our right wall i call it the right wall that's the south wall technically if you're uh keeping directions as to what part of the studio we're in here but um 
put up there. There's that back wall again, but here's that's that's the west wall, right? And uh, but yeah, similar. Something we showed that picture in show number one, but I want to get into some more of this. Again, looking great. Got the great grids, the cabinets looking. Man, you just that looks like it could be somebody's office. I mean, that's a oh absolutely. That's a beautiful finish you've got there. Another where uh, cabinets space here, some uh, closet doors there, and then again everything hung up nicely. What was that stuff you used to hang stuff again? Slat wall. Side wall. Slat wall. Slat wall. Yes. Slat wall. Okay. Now you're looking here. Here's somebody's race car room. You've got the <laughs> Indy 500 going on here. Keep it crispy. Keep it. Tell me, I, I put up the the design there, but I want everybody to see that floor. Whose house is this? They've got the fridge. They've got the bikes. And look at that floor. Who, who, who wants a house like this? Somebody's big in an Indy car? Or is this like this, they're going back to the 50s? What's going on here? So funny enough, they did have uh, an old Mustang that they kept in there. It was red. Okay. And then, yeah, but that that's not an epoxy floor. That's a, a race deck floor. So that's just snap lock tile. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But did you put that in for them? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so okay. we did everything that you see in there. Yeah, it looks just dynamite. So I'll take another look at that, everybody, because there's some cool-looking stuff there. Again, you got a window. How many people have a window in their garage? Well, now you might want a window because it looks like a <laughs> part of the house and some of the cabinets you've got on there. And uh, that wraps up the pictures that we've got there. But there are so many other pictures you can take a look at. I'm going to put up on the wall for everybody to take a look. Here is Garage Designs of St. Garage Designs of St. Louis since 2002. This is their Facebook page and all the information you need to get a hold of them. A lot of awesome posts you can see some of those pictures we put up here and some more stuff a lot more information you can gain here an easy way to contact them but uh, i always like to take a look at and show everybody a little bit of the photos that they've got there so take a look here we've just shown you some exclusive stuff that you won't see out here they will be out here shortly but uh, a little bit more of what you got there now there's an example that's that one of those lifts that's a four post lift obviously mm -hmm. i can count one two three four <laughs> and so now that's what somebody puts in their garage to lift the car up and then they can do their work underneath it, right? Right, right. And tell me why somebody, what, what are the uses for having a lift like that? Oh, well, you know, a car takes up a lot of room, so you put it up there, you got, you can park another car under it, so it really just utilizes the space, more storage, more room, don't yeah. have to really worry about putting whatever nice car that you're going to put up on top of the lift, keeping it outside, getting beat by the weather, so... Right, and you could even, if you, if you felt so inclined, do work on your car, I guess, if you needed to. Yeah, right? not me, but, but mostly, more power to them. <laughs> <laughs> but it does like you to at least check out the underneath and see what's going on. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, then it's like essentially two cars for the price of one in the one slot. It looks like they've got this kind of in the middle of the garage, but, um, but yeah, it just is another great way to make use of that space. And, like, those things don't cost a tremendous amount. This is the four-post one. What's a, what's a lift like that go for? So it's usually about 6000 for a lift like, like that. 6, so not terrible. No. And then it's better. It's cheaper than adding a third garage or a fourth garage. Oh, yeah. And so they make more space. I've got friends. One of my friends has, like, a 14-car garage. He's done really well. And so maybe he, he could have saved some garage space if he had a couple of these. I was about to say, is your friend Jay Leno? <laughs> <laughs> he is not. Uh, he is a, I'll say this much, he's a former pro baseball player. Oh, well, that makes and, sense. <laughs> uh, and that was a house a while, a while back. I, I don't know if he still has that house or not. But I remember looking at the garage. I'm like, the garage, yeah, the house is pretty big too. But I was like, the garage is almost as big. The house looked bigger than the garage. But it's a 14-car garage. But if you can imagine, so he could, you could really do some work in there. Oh, Make yeah. Make a basketball court. Have you put a basketball court in anybody? Any Not yet, garage? but I'm up for a challenge. Okay. <laughs> Something you might be willing to take on. All right. Uh, but yeah, take a look here at, at the at, at the Facebook page. Uh, garage Designs, just do that search on Facebook and you'll see, see their, their work. I'm going to close this picture and tell you, show you a few more of these because um, when, it, when it comes down to getting these things done, there is just an, a crazy amount of of awesome so this is a good example on the wall up here is that kind of that epoxy mix going together and uh, what, what's going on there this is the application of it so this is a way that you can do it we don't get on our knees and trial it on so if you you can look real close you can see some spalling so basically what we do is we trial on something just to you know fill up all the little divots okay and then we put the epoxy on just to give you. them a nice flat floor okay yeah some more examples here so we, oh my gosh, how big is this garage? This has got to be a... So this is only 600 square feet. I was going to say it's five or 600 square foot if I'm looking at 25 by 25 probably. Yeah, it wasn't It wasn't too bad, but yeah, that's this job was awesome. I love doing this one. Yeah, a lot of important things. So got some tips for you out there, some stuff about the holidays, some client testimonials. We've covered a bunch of them, but yeah, there's that before and after. Now they oh, had yeah. kind of a good finish on the walls, but that floor, holy cow. Oh, it just makes it pop. That is amazing. Yeah, like I said, you're talking showroom. Tell me about this one here. Is that a marble finish looking like? Yeah, what yes. That? So that guy, he actually had, oh, God, what was it? Uh, old Corvette and uh, old, 
man, I want to say it was a Mustang. But anyway, so it's two spots for it. So it's a marbled, and then we did a red picture frame with the flakes. Okay. So yeah, yeah, though no, that was fun. We actually went to Cape Girardeau for that one. Is it okay? Yeah. yeah. A lot of uh, car car guys down in Cape Southeast Missouri. Oh yeah. The Cape, they call it. My dad worked there for many years. Oh really? Very cool. Yeah. College admissions counselor, uh, recruiter for Central Methodist. That was his region. Yes. Lots of good stuff down there. All <laughs> right. Well, tell me then, as we finish up here, we got about uh, ten minutes, eight minutes left. What's a big challenge you've had to overcome with regard to your business or something you've had, to, something you learned from? Because we always like to share with people, well, I had this going on, I didn't realize, and then I overcame the, the issue. Obviously, you're still in business to talk about it. Man, so really, you know, Mike Tyson said it. Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> so you just got to be on your feet. You got to be spry. You just got to keep rolling with the punches. You know, there, there's green on the other side. Just keep rolling and you'll do fine. Keep, keep rolling and you'll do fine. Stick with it, I think is uh, what yeah, you're saying there, yeah. too, because so many people give up over the first hurdle. Um, the judge for the Cowboy and Judge show we've had for years, we just ended that oh, about a year ago, but uh, both going off doing our own shows now. Mm -hmm. But we had a quote where he, he, we put the, the guy chiseling at the top and the guy chiseling at the bottom, it shows a diagram, and they're both almost yeah. through the making the tunnel to the other side. The one guy fell down in exhaustion, giving up. Mm -hmm. The other guy just keeping going, doesn't realize, neither one of them realize, that they're just a couple more strikes away from getting there. And but you say that is kind of the truth, the way it is with business. You just, oh, yeah. There's always I mean, something you've got to deal with, something you've got to Yeah, every overcome. day there's something new. Someone's going to call you with something. You're going to, you know, family issues, just business issues, just any issue, you know, but you just got to keep going, you know. You can't just hurdle in a corner. You just got to <laughs> stand up, dust your boots off, and just keep running. Yeah, if you're going to be the owner, you got to be able to take over and uh, make things happen one way oh, or the yeah. other. Again, quoting mom this time. The show must go on. You right, got that, everybody? That's right. You got it. All right, there we go. <laughs> um, some of that artistic behavior we've got. <laughs> Do you have a favorite quote that kind of helps keep you motivated? That's something that just always ticks in your mind. You say, man, you know, when, when I get down and out, I think about this. So Yoda said it best. Do or do not, there's no try. <laughs> do just, or die. Ah, yeah, like yeah. So either get after it or just chill out yeah. you know I, I've, I'm a, a, a mentor of mine I'll never forget he said there is no try it's not like you kind of did it you right. either tried and didn't get there mm -hmm. or you tried and you did yeah there's no trying if it fits right. the, the outcome uh, but uh, trying is not an outcome uh, trying is no is no part of the effort you're, you're either doing it or you're not so and you'll just roll with the punches and you'll be all right <laughs> a, a nice quote from Yoda there everybody I didn't <laughs> use that one that's a good one there you go uh, but yeah following up with some of our Star Wars background here. Well, <laughs> tell me, if somebody's ready to do business with you, but they've got a few questions. Or what's one of the biggest objections you hear from somebody? They're like, really want to do this, but what do, what do people have to know more about? I don't really think that we... Does it always come down to price? Or is it pretty much when they're ready for you, they've made that decision? So usually we don't get too many, you know, too much banter. So usually... People always get multiple quotes. I encourage it, you know, really know, you know, I don't want to be the guy that's the most expensive, but usually we always end up getting it because we're right in the middle. You know, we're fair, professional, and just try to really help people. Like I said, there's so many franchises out here and, you know, they got to do what the main guy has to say, but, you know, we just really cut from a different cloth and try to help you and make sure that you're getting what you want. Instead of just me saying, oh, this is what you need. No, this is your whole garage. It's your own little castle. Yeah, your little <laughs> castle there. He said it himself. I didn't make him say that, but it is. It's your little, I, that's, I'm not the first person to ever say your little castle. But, oh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's why we named the show because that's what everybody ultimately wants. Look at there it is, everybody. Your little castle. And uh, everybody deserves to have their own. You put the work in. You've been dedicated. You've worked for many years. Mm -hmm. Get yourself a house and turn it into your little castle so that you... I have your own little kingdom you can have oh, yeah. there with your little castle. Well, then tell me, what gives you the most satisfaction at the end of the day? Why do you wake up every day to continue doing this? I've just seen everyone's just so happy with what we do. You know, that really just being able to blow someone's mind away, just like, oh, wow, you really transformed this into that. Like, you know, a dingy little garage into, like you said earlier, a Taj Mahal, a little Taj Mahal. Right. So it's it's just really nice to see just people really love what we do and it makes me love it even more 
Well, it keeps you going. That's a great way to, to go about life if you're uh, having good satisfaction and uh, great response. And just right. I, like I said, when I when Dawn told, told me she'd talk to you because I said, "Find uh, we've got to get one of these." There's only a few guys I've seen in town, and I, mm-hmm. we kept seeing your stuff pop up. I'm like, see if they'll come be on the show. There's some really good looking work that they do. Well, how do you feel that you contribute um, to the community? If there's one thing you say you do, is, it, is there a particular charity that you enjoy, or is it helping? I mean, by virtue of having your business, you're helping people to realize the value in their house and what their little castle yeah, is. Yeah. What, what do you enjoy most? What gives you what just gives you that little feeling of contribution to our little planet? So I like to try to do what we can. You know, this year I'm trying to find, you know, more charities and all that fun stuff. I'd really like to give back more to the community, but really so far it's just, you know, me helping, you know, like little league games or, you know, local high schools if they need some vendors or something, someone to work. So really just try to do what we can just to help the community but like i said i'm just trying to find more charities that we can really do something for like maybe even a toy drive or something okay so if you're an owner of a business or of a charity i'm sorry reach out to brandon he might help you but i like the fact you said that you get into the community and you're helping for the sports events and those Mm -hmm. those are really important if it wasn't for sports i wouldn't have learned like 90 percent of the skills i needed to learn to be successful on this planet and uh, i hadn't had anybody say that before so that's a good one i like that the community giving back and, and for those organizations and, and helping the kids play right. sports in particular. And uh, that's what you get to do. Well, um, we appreciate you taking time to get on the show with us. We're going to show a little bit more of what you've got going on here. I'm going to give everybody a quick review of the website and uh, check out that first interview, everybody, uh, because Brandon talked about a lot of great information in that one. This one's a ton of great information as well. But this is something, if you're going to add this to a house, it's going to increase an incredible value to your house and help you to get more enjoyment out of what your your, your castle, right? You can have your Super Bowl party in your garage. Why oh, wouldn't yeah. you do that with such an awesome room looking like what you have here? But uh, take a look here. Like I said, the, the, the few things I wanted to show about here are the, uh, here's your epoxy flooring page. And so we'll put this up here on the wall. So everybody sees the garage flooring company we offer epoxy and race deck flooring and that's what we were looking at before and a little bit of what you get there you give everybody a free estimate oh yeah. so, so they can come in and say hey man no no obligation but it uh, gives you here uh, this website has just got tons of information i keep going down on just on the flooring page here's your cabinet page lots of great information there also look at those cabinets holy cow you can get cabinets for miles there, right? <laughs> and then storage, because kind of what cabinets are, but to make that all look good and be, and so you're storing stuff, not in cabinets, but hanging on that strip. Slat wall. Slat wall. Okay, slat wall. Is that what it is? And that looks great. And then uh, then top it off, get yourself a lift. And not a facelift. We're talking about a car lift right there. And there's an example of two cars and how they uh, are put into your car so you or to your garage so you can do that. I've looked for, for one of those for a long time and uh, I might just have to bite the bullet. I have to call you and say, give me some advice as to who you <laughs> recommend. And a little bit of other information there and some great reviews that everybody has to talk about. And a lot of those you'll find just by going out to Google to do so. So Brandon, thank you for spending time to come into our studio today. Thank you um, for having me. We, we really look forward to you, you uh, being on the show here, but check out uh, like I said, everything you've got there, garage-designs.com. And uh, stay tuned for more, everybody. This is the Your Little Castle Show, where we bring some experts to you, like Brandon Coleman and his team here from Garage Designs. Giddy up. <laughs>